there's a case in your district where it's not right. explained by because they just came from China or they were with somebody who had traveled. Do we have that part right? That is correct. They call it a uh, community infection or community transmission. CBS News can now confirm a Department of Health and Human Services whistleblower has filed a complaint alleging workers responding to American evacuees from China weren't prepared. The complaint says those who monitor people at two military bases were improperly deployed and they did not have the necessary training or equipment. Some worked without full protective gear. One even took a commercial flight once the work was done. Now, one of the Air Force bases where this apparently happened is in the same county where the patient here became infected. The vaccine is coming along well, and in speaking to the doctors, we think this is something that we can develop fairly rapidly. Although this is the fastest we have ever gone from a sequence of a virus to a trial, it still would not be any applicable to the epidemic unless we really wait about a year to a year and a half. We can expect to see more cases in the United States. I don't think it's inevitable. And Flu has a fatality ratio of about 0.1%. Correct. Uh, this has a fatality ratio somewhere between 2 and 3%. Uh, well, given we that, think, the fact we, that think, we, we don't know exactly. The numbers that. So far. And the flu is higher than that. The flu is much higher than that. Flu mortality rates are about 0.1%. So 0.1% of the people who get an infection with the flu will die of it. With coronavirus so far, uh, the, the larger studies show the, the numbers closer to 2%. That's a 20-fold difference. And Mr. Trump said Vice President Mike Pence will head the task force responsible for monitoring the outbreak and coordinating with local officials across the country on their response to the virus. But the administration has been criticized for cutting funding that had been dedicated to coordinating government responses to public health crises. The virus is blamed for killing more than 2,800 people and it's now having its most adverse impact on the financial markets. We expect more turmoil today after the Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged almost 1,200 points. That was the biggest one-day drop in history. The Dow has lost more than 2,600 points since Monday, nearly 10% of its value. Medicare for all will lower health care costs in this country by $450 billion a year. The math does not add up. It adds up to four more years of Donald Trump. It doesn't show enough about how we're going to pay for it. Thank I dug in, I did the work, and then Bernie's team trashed me for it. Vladimir Putin thinks that Donald Trump is, should be president of the United States, and that's why Russia is helping you get oh, elected Mr. so you lose to him. I am not looking forward to a scenario where it comes down to Donald Trump with his nostalgia for the social order of the 1950s and Bernie Sanders with a nostalgia for the revolutionary politics of the 1960s. 150 million people have been killed since 2007 when Bernie voted to exempt the gun manufacturers from liability. More than all the wars. I'm hearing my name mentioned a little bit tonight. Oh, uh, I'm Barry Gordon. And I'm Andre Goldman. And this is News Wrap, live at five. You want some? Well, you just touched it. It could be contaminated. Oh, but, but you, you can hit it like there. No, no, no. You, you're not going to, you want your you own were on bottle? When did you go to Hawaii last? Uh, November. That's not China. I don't know who else was <laughs> on that plane. Anybody else could have been on the plane. Okay. See, All right. this is exactly how this kind of thing starts. All CDC. Right. Come get this dude. Cause Wash your hands. That's all I'm going to say. Just keep washing your hands and using this stuff. You wash your hands like this? And you'll be fine. Yes, I use a big <laughs> bowl. When I, I go like this, and I toss salad at the same yeah, time. Well, yeah, well, see? Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know what that's all about, folks, but that's it for all me. All right. Okay. So, um, Serious stuff. Coronavirus. It is serious. It's very, very I know. Serious. I'm kidding. but We're Making light of it. it, but is, it is. We're, we are, because you have to. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, look, it's serious, but 
we we don't want to exaggerate it either. So it's well, it's something where we have to be watchful and conscious and uh, so we have two aware cases of, it. of community spread now in Northern California. Yes, in Northern California. Yeah, uh, that were aware one in of. Solano County and one in Santa Clara County. Okay, but then again, that could be due to those. The uh, if the whistleblower was accurate, that could be due to the health people that we sent in. Just wearing you know, jeans and the, t-shirts, uh, apparently. I know, apparently, <laughs> apparently, or didn't yeah. identify it and sent yeah. pe- people home or did whatever they did. So you gave them a couple of moist towelettes and sent them back on the phone I, or something. I know, I know, but it is serious, mm-hmm. and we're taking it seriously. Um, well, everybody should. Uh, but obviously, the president um, is taking it seriously in a somewhat different way. Yeah, he got on TV the other day and held up a list and listed a bunch of countries uh, when I was watching and. Hey, this says we're the safest, and then Sweden, and then Finland. Wow, that makes you feel better. Yeah, well, first of all, that had nothing to do with coronavirus. That was an overall World Health Organization thing. That he printed for five minutes. That he pointed to. That that somebody printed out five minutes before he walked on the stage. Right, he didn't talk at all about the 600 people he's fired uh, from public health. Mm -hmm. And money. The, the other thing, though, the most disturbing thing, I think, about Trump's news conference was just the fact that, I, you know, I, I teach acting, right? And I had this kid once in a scene, and he was just doing these things and chewing up the scenery and doing all of this stuff. And he was a side character. The, there were two main characters in it. He was a side character. And I walked up to him and I was trying to say, how can I communicate to him that he doesn't need to do all of that? And I walked up to him and I just said, this scene isn't about you. Right? And he got it. The problem is that Donald Trump thinks everything is about him and he can't help but see things through that perspective he can't you know so it's what the market is doing to him what you know this this health crisis is doing to him and that was so blatant and it was so obvious during that press conference it wasn't about us it wasn't about you know, I'm on the watch, and I'm there for you, and I'm going to help you. It was about, you know, oh, I better not agree with these experts because what they're saying could get me in trouble. You lost me right after I teach acting. Oh, okay, I knew I would, but... <laughs> I'm still kind of trying to get over that part I was it. just laying it out, okay? <laughs> I was laying it out. I'm just messing so, with you. So, no, I know. All, all very, very good points, very astute points, and... Look, now we could be headed towards a national crisis. We could. And we could be heading toward an economic crisis. And uh, we could I mean, be the market sort of stabilized today. Well, it only lost 357 points. That's, but That's uh, sort of stabilizing know, in this That's situation. sort of stabilizing, but right? We could be headed towards a crisis that has a lot of branches and a lot of arms. Yeah. And this is that moment we talked about a long time ago where if we ran into a situation that was really, really bad we got a dude who's ill-equipped to handle it. And that press conference uh, screamed that in volumes. Oh, it did? In volumes. It just said, if this thing gets serious and this dude is at the helm, you'll need a whole lot of that hand sanitizer. Yeah. And everybody's going to be doing this in the sink. That's right. Because like, you know, we're going to have to take care of, <laughs> we're going to have to take care of ourselves. Because yeah. th- there's... He's not on the watch. He is not Mm-mm. looking out for us. Not at all. And that's a scary, that's a scary thought. Very scary. So I'm going to pivot. Uh, be my guest. Well, uh, no, let's use this subject to pivot. Okay. Uh, politics, everything is politics and politics is everything. Right. So, and we know that sooner or later, this situation will become part of the campaign. The campaign. Yeah. Who would it benefit the most? If they applied it properly to their campaign. Biden. Because? Because if this becomes a major issue, then I think people start to, and especially if he does more press conferences like that, then I think the real issue becomes who looks, who can we get? Previous leadership. Who's had experience 
who's dealt with these things, right. who showed a steady hand. Previous leadership. Who was part of a successful administration. <laughs> um, Everything that was supposed to be a talking point for him all throughout anyway. Exactly. And this moves the voters, I think, in that direction. It says, OK, no, we're not going to look at the age. We're not looking at any. What we're looking at now is we know that if this were to happen under Biden's watch, it would be a much, much different situation wow. than it is now. Wow. And that's why I think it will help Biden, because everyone else is untested. He's the only one that was in that Oval Office along with Barack, right? Well, and th- that's a very good point. And, and there was some success in high-pressure situations. I won't call them emergency situations. Mm-hmm. But got to remember, uh, bin Laden ain't here anymore. Well, and, and also the Ebola. And the Ebola. And he dealt so, with the, they dealt, they dealt with, with the these Ebola things. So, issue. So there's some, did it effectively. If his campaign is worth its salt, and at times it has been, and at times it hasn't been, quite right. frankly, um, this will probably come up. And it will probably come up when he's, given a vict- when he's taking a victory lap tomorrow. Yeah, he was stronger on the debate. Much stronger. Um, I thought he was a little silly at times because it was like it was it was Joe. I wrote that bill Biden. I mean, basically, but it was when any, anyone said anything. Yeah, I wrote that. I did that. And, then, and Amy Klobuchar said, well, no, no, actually, I wrote it. But and she was, you know, and so then you realized he was talking about a different bill. Right. But, you know, but he, so he got a little silly. Yeah, I was with that guy. Yeah, but, I, I was there. I did that. But maybe that'll work for him. Two things. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good kind of little humorous moment with Klobuchar. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was meant to be. It wasn't meant yeah. to be, but it was a good little right. humorous moment. Right. But point number one. Sanders never said, I wrote boom, 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 boom. He said only that about Medicare for right. All. Right. Yeah. Which. I wrote the bill. Yeah, I wrote the bill. That. Yeah. Uh, that's A. I wrote it. But B. Don't tell me what's in it. I wrote it. The bigger moment. <laughs> Go ahead. The, the, uh, wait, I got to stop this. <laughs> What? what is with this dude just putting his hand up all the time doing oh, like this, this? This? What is this? What is this? I, I don't know. He was he was you trying know, to get attention from the Yeah, do the moderator. voice when you do it. Do the voice when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Recognize me. <Yeah. laughs> it, it was just <laughs> Hey, I'm I'm over here. Get me over here. All right. You know what? Look, I know that now you're pivoting to a point of if this guy is the nominee, we have a shot at beating Trump. I agree with that. Yeah. We do have a shot. As I said, I think that everybody left could win, and I think that everybody could lose. This is the, I'm not going to call him the sorriest, but this is uh, the most questionable as far as strength and weakness and chance to win and not win uh, Finalist, for lack of a better term, yeah. that uh, I could think of. I don't look at one person and go, that's a definite winner in November. I know we're saying that Bernie, uh, a point that we talked about off the air, right. has a lot, a lot of young people, support from young people. Right. Um, if that translates to votes, that's great. He has a shot. Well, look, there are two, you know, we're, we, and we, we discussed this a little bit before we came on the air. Or maybe we were on the air and I'm having a senior moment. No, but, it was before. But, but it was before. And we're kind of talking past each other we are. right now. Because there are two theories about how to win this election. And one theory is that you've got to go middle. You've got to get those suburban ex-Republican women. Uh, you've got to get the women that voted for moderate candidates in 2018. Um, You've got to try to get, uh, you know, put this Obama coalition, which is rather broken right now, together. And that would lead us to Biden and away from Bernie. The other theory. Most likely it would. I agree. The other theory is, well, right now. Right now. But the other theory is, or Buttigieg or Bloomberg or whoever. We'll stick at Biden for now. Yeah. The moderate. Right. The other theory is you need to energize the base more than it's ever been energized before. So the question that I keep listening for 
when I watch the media and, and when I talk to folks is who would stay home if it's Bernie? And I, Bernie is a nominee, right? Right. Okay. And no one has said they'll stay home because the Democratic establishment is so committed to removing Trump that, you know, they've said, we'll vote for Bernie, we'll vote for anybody. I mean, I haven't heard anybody say they're going to stay home. You know who I've heard say they're going to stay home? And I don't agree with it, but I've heard them say it. Who? The three and a half million supposed. I haven't talked to all three and a half million, but the people that I've talked to, the youth, have said, if it's not Bernie, there's nothing to motive. They're not as afraid of Trump as all the rest of you know, us are. The only person you talk to is Jared, who works up front. And I was there when you talked to him. That's the only person. you No, talk I've to talked about this. to other folks. I've talked to students at school. I've talked to other people. Look, here's Sorry, the deal. But I have. Don't apologize to me because you have to talk to some kids. OK, <laughs> here's the deal. So I don't see Bernie losing any votes from the base. He may lose Republicans, but my guess is they're not going to vote for Trump anyway, and maybe they'll I, stay I home, and maybe I, it's their turn to stay home. I think you have home. some points, but I don't agree with all of your points, and this is one That's of That's cool. Thank you. I, I appreciate you allowing me my rights. Is there anything else that you can give me today that I don't have? <laughs> yeah, the local brief. <laughs> We're not going to that yet, because I got a point to make. Okay. So you're not giving me that. All right. All right. Go for it. Look. First off, this is Let's go your to local, local brief. news brief for Friday, February 28th, 2020. Los Angeles County health officials have said there's no need to panic over the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. But the Department of Health is still preparing for a possible outbreak. Orange County, San Diego County, and the city of San Francisco have all declared health emergencies in response to the novel coronavirus. Dr. Prabhu Gounder, the medical director of the LA County Department of Health, is quoted in a Pasadena Now article as saying, the current risk to LA County residents for getting COVID-19 is very low. LA County Supervisor Catherine Barger has proposed a motion to request federal funding in order to support the county against the virus. If passed, the board will ask for $7.5 million. Barger is quoted in a Pasadena Now article as saying, this funding is necessary to support our efforts and ensure the ongoing protection of our residents. The funding is needed for things like coordinating with the CDC, response efforts, and lab testing. The City Council has adopted a resolution to defend the confidentiality of the 2020 census against any breach or threatened breach. The formal adoption comes after the co-executive director of the National Day Laborer Organizing Network, Pablo Alvarado, proposed the resolution in order to ease concerns over participating in this year's census. Some key points of the adopted resolution include using the City Council's influence to prevent any breach of confidentiality and transparency as well as litigation to challenge any threats of breach. Alvarado is quoted in a Pasadena Now article as saying, it's a little bit of comfort, and that he now feels comfortable encouraging his friends to participate in the census. During Monday night's city council meeting, District 3 council member John Kennedy expressed concern over city manager Steve Murmel's decision to reassign former fire chief Bertrand Washington earlier this month. Kennedy said during the meeting, there are a whole host of questions that so far have been refused to be answered by our city manager. District 1 council member and vice mayor Tyrone Hampton addressed Murmel during the meeting saying, I meet with you twice a month. I talk to you regularly on the phone, and him being terminated never came up in our conversations. Murmel responded to the concerns and inquiries by saying he made a statement on the matter two weeks ago and that he wasn't planning on making any further statements this evening. City Attorney Michelle Bagneris clarified that further discussion on reasoning for the reassignment during an open session would violate confidentiality rights. Kennedy requested a closed session for further discussion. The Pasadena Star News states that in an interview on Tuesday, Mayor Turnick said he would try to agendize the discussion for next week's council meeting. You have just watched the award-winning news brief. Uh, thank you, Hannah and Joe and Jared and everybody who's always responsible for putting that together. We really appreciate it. Won the WAVE Award. And we thank you for that. 
You want to make your point before we go you to? You know, I was making a point before discussion. they interrupted me with this local brief. All right, go for it. What? Oh, I blocked the mic. Oh, now you're going to cut me off. Go ahead. All right. So this is the, you were watching the award-winning local brief. Uh, and we want to thank Hannah and Joe and Jared and everybody. I guess I was blocking the microphones. So and everybody else who cut me off when I was making we a did point it last twice. time. Now go ahead and make your point. I'm not going to make it now. Oh, come on. No, I'm not going to say it now. Oh. They don't deserve to hear it, and it doesn't deserve to be on the show. You want some hands? I don't want that. Oh, okay. You're trying to infect me with something. <laughs> and I'm going to guarantee you it was all race-based when they cut me off. That's exactly what's going on here. Uh, because I was winning the argument, so you slipped them more money than they ever seen in their life, $3.63. And they cut me off. So now, I'm not going to make my point. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to drink water so I don't get infected with the coronavirus. You want to make it in nope. Studio B? <laughs> we'll go to Studio B, and if they don't cut me off there, I'll make my point. Okay. So I'm treated with some respect. All right. So and if I find you, out who did that, they're out. So what do you want to talk about out of the news? <laughs> Whoever just cut me off. That's what I want to talk about. No, I'm going to make my point when we get there. But out of the news okay. brief, what do I want to talk about? Yeah. Look, I think that the chief situation... Content, the fire chief situation continues to be the top story in town. Yeah, I think that's right. I know that people in City Hall want it to go away at council meetings. That's just not going to happen anytime soon. Now, I don't know if we're ever going to get to the bottom of it, if the public's really going to know what happened, but there's stuff to be investigated and, and there's stories to be told. Passing and now is going to tell that story and continue to tell that story. Okay. All right. All right. You ready for Studio B? So we're looking forward to that then. All right. I appreciate it, man. So you want to you want to because when you're the managing editor, they can't cut you off. You, you want to say whatever you want. You want to <laughs> give us any hints as to where the story's going? Um, we filed some PRAs and there's some information that we got back that we're reviewing right now. Want to tell it's, the, it's, the, it's, the it's people what a PRA is or uh, no? No, they can read past it now and find out. OK, I mean, <laughs> that's what that's what I get paid to do. So, OK, I'm going to direct them back there so they can find out everything Monday, Tuesday. But I don't mean what the PRA is. No, Just I'm going to tell them, them what a PRA is uh -huh. after when I when I write the story. Oh, got so it. we'll okay. do it that way. All right. I know. Yeah. That's, Public Records Act. Is, OK, I, I know. OK. All yeah. Right. Now now you're trying to correct me. I didn't After say anything. It's a, guy, it's a guy in the but, audience that said Well, he's argument. the boss, but let me get something straight with you. <laughs> okay. This is exactly why that behavior we just saw of cutting off people and, and, and women, people of color, this is exactly why your candidate Elizabeth Warren is down the toilet and she's on her way out, because this is exactly how they treated her. I agree. During the, on the debate stage, and now you're doing it here. All right, folks, let's go to Studio B. <laughs> I didn't run it. Thanks for joining us. The, no, we, we're not done yet. Oh, well, <laughs> I gave it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. So, yeah. hey, we got the election coming up, man, the local election. We sure do on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. And your district so is we're, up. So we're not going to be back until that's all over, huh? Yeah, and your district is, is up in this election, right? My district is up. Did you vote early or are you voting on Tuesday? What are you doing? I'll vote Tuesday. Okay, so I know you're voting Warren in the primary. Yes, I am voting Warren in the primary. Okay. If Warren loses and leaves the, primary. The, leaves the race, do you, should I dare tell you what I'm, <laughs> who I'm going to be supporting? Yeah, I know who you're going to support. You're going to support Bernie Sanders. Yeah, I'll support Bernie. That's about right. Yeah, I will. Um, you're going to go from one loser to the next. He's certainly not my favorite choice. Well, look, to, on, a lot totally, of a lot has been said about a, uni of, a lot has been said about a yeah. unifying candidate. Who would that be for you? Who would you have seen as a unifying? I think candidate? Warren is a unifying candidate. I think it, empirically she is a unifying okay. candidate because she has gotten half of her support from former Clinton voters and half of her support from former Sanders voters. Who'd she get the other half from? Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to catch me with that one. No. I thought I might. I thought no, I might. The, no, the sanitizer didn't go to my brain. I thought I no, might. I, I, I thought I the might. Two, the two halves. Yeah, right. But no, she has shown that. And so the, the question is, can she get to a brokered convention, you know, gather Look, up delegates? It, and, and we can continue this discussion, you know, in, in Studio B. Okay. But I really think um, she's probably done. And it's beginning to look more like what we said it was going to be all along, which is a two-person race between Sanders and Biden. Between the white and, guys. And, yeah, the two old white guys. The two ancient white guys. That's about right. Yeah. All and, right, you ready for Studio B? And that's kind of sad. That's really kind of sad. 
You ready so for studio I don't B know what? if we're ready. You're, you're in a big hurry to get over to Studio B. Is something waiting well, I'm hoping there for you? There's popcorn or? there because there's no popcorn. Yet. No, I don't. This think is the this longest is... five minutes in history. She's been pointing at that five <laughs> minute thing for like twelve minutes. <laughs> no, I don't think this is going to be. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. So have you talked to any of our public health officials? About, I have. Uh, and what are they saying about the coronavirus? Well, at the beginning of the week, it was this is really nothing. And well, they weren't saying nothing. They were saying, hey, the risk is low. Uh, we're not. It's kind of cavalier at the beginning of the week, mm -hmm. quite frankly. And then we get to this and it becomes, oh, we've been informed all along. That's not what they were telling us at the beginning of the week. Hmm. Now, that's out of the public health department. And then it became, OK, somebody, you know. They're going to come down to council and speak. PUSD has a plan. We've all been talking all along about this and what would happen if it reached a crisis level. But they weren't telling us that until the CD said, CDC said this could reach a crisis level. Yeah. So that's kind of what I figured would be said in that point. But, hey, Pasadena, I think, is about where the rest of the nation is with this thing. Right. But probably, I mean, I, let's not exaggerate the fear. It's, it, it is a high um, fatality rate. It's much higher than the flu. It's, the, the flu is around 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and this is 10 times that. Why are people afraid? Though? It's 2 to 3 percent. Why are people afraid? Because, first of all, 2 to 3 percent is a lot. What don't they if, have if that makes them afraid? If one out of five people get this then a tremendous number of people are going to die. But most of the people, almost all of the people who are going to die are old folks like me. But that's what they should Or be. people that have pre-existing conditions. Wait, 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 wait. That's conditions. what they should be afraid of. But why are they afraid now? Because they didn't have all that information before Thursday, Friday, today. A lot of that information came out. Why were they afraid before? Because they I didn't just, have any information. That's true. Because everybody kept saying this is nothing to worry about. Right. But yet the hospital is examining almost everybody who comes in. Exactly. With a respiratory, a cold or anything else for this. Exactly. All right. Well, our 12, five minutes. All right. Are up. Well, we're going to go to our, our uh, sanitary room, Studio B. <laughs> I hear that purified air in there. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care of yourself. And uh, we will see you next week, which will be after Super Tuesday. I thought we were going to Studio B. Going to be. Well, I'm saying goodbye to the people that aren't joining us on Studio B. I'm Barry Gordon. I'm Andre Coleman. <laughs> and this has been News Wrap, live at 5. Grab the hand sanitizer. Let's yeah, go. we're going to go to San